you know, there are certain patterns to life, and we don't always get to choose how things are going to unfold. You know, if you get a you get a child that has something in their life that disrupts the normal developmental stages, <clears throat> we can't ignore that that's going to have an impact. You know, when you're born, you start forming certain attachments when you have physical contact with your mother and your father. You, you learn that human contact is okay. You learn that when somebody reaches for you that that touch is for comfort, it's not a risk. And so that's where we form attachments. And if you don't have that, then it's very possible to form attachment disorders. And if a child is ill and they spend a lot of time in the NICU or they spend a lot of time in the hospital, in and out, they have a chronic disease, that can really take away a lot of that bonding time between a mother and child where they would be in physical contact and they feel the warmth and the comfort and even hear the heartbeat of the mother, those things that are so essential that can affect how that child can bond later in life at, at 20, 30, 40 years old. And you can't ignore just because somebody gets over a physical illness that there weren't problems with developmental stages early on. And when somebody has a chronic disease early, that writes on the slate of who they are. And then if that child doesn't adjust well, and so they come into conflict with authority, and now they're going into like juvenile detention or some kind of group home or into foster care, now you add to that institutionalization. And then we see all of a sudden this kid doesn't fit in somewhere. Well, of course they don't because they've never been socialized. They didn't get the developmental aspects that they needed when they hit those benchmarks and then they weren't socialized along the way. So you need to ask yourself, if you've got a child that didn't go down the path where they had normal developmental opportunities, are they doing what they're doing because they missed some of those things? Do you need to go back and close the gap and catch those things up? And if the answer is yes, there's help for doing that. Study that. Ask for help. Get the kind of guidance that you need. Uh, in this case today, we got a 15-year-old kid that's out gangbanging. Why? Because that's the group where he found acceptance. He didn't find it at home. He didn't find it at school because he was out of sync with the rhythm of everyone else. So we found a group that didn't have much of an admission criteria. Unfortunately, that group is criminal. So we've got to reset the button and see if we can find, we've got to hit the reset button and see if we can get back in sync by taking him completely out of that environment. When Gabe got cancer, our entire lives turned upside down. Now we have to save him from this gang lifestyle that he's trying to lead. Stop calling the cops on me. You don't expect me to call the police when you're running away, stealing guns. I sometimes feel that when he went through his treatment, the chemo took a piece of his soul. It was like a switch flipped. He was angry, became very aggressive verbally, physically. He was not himself. At 10 years old, he was definitely starting to hang out with the homies, the thugs. But age 12, Gabe broke into an elementary school and vandalized it. He served two weeks in juvenile hall, but he was placed on probation until the age of 15. At age 13, he had tried cocaine, and I heard that he was also popping Xanax. Last year, Gabriel came storming through the door. He was covered in blood. I thought his nose was broken. We robbed the wrong person who is a homie. We stole guns from him, okay, on accident. He said that he had broken into a house and stole some firearms. The gang members beat the crap out of him. I'm not from the hood, but I kick with the homies. My day's pretty simple. I just get up, call the homies. They'll just come to my house, and then we'll just post up. We just get like a tequila, beers, smoke weed sometimes. Usually we just mob it. And then if anybody starts tripping, then we start tripping too. If you're walking around at night, probably gonna get either jumped or popped that a couple days ago I was just posted sitting there. And then out of nowhere, like, pop, pop, pop. And then I turn around and like, like there's like a laser right next to my homie's head. And then we started running hella fast, beefing it with a lot of people. Is there like a hit on you? I don't know. You don't know? I don't snitch. I've never snitched in my life. So I'm not gonna say like where I was at, who got shot, who I think it was. I can't say that I'm from the gang, but I kick it with all the homies from the gang. The first time I got locked up in juvie, it was cool. I was like, 
I'm going to be here with my homies. And I did like 50 days. I'm off probation now, so I'm just chilling because I maxed out. I've already been locked up 11 times. I'm trying to get my felonies off my record. I'm not trying to be in the system locked up my whole life. I told my parents I wasn't going to go back, but they don't believe me. Ask yourself if your kid's really a bad kid or if they're just out of sync because something threw them off in their early developmental stages.